So now that we have some knowledge of right triangles, here's four of them. And if you look, you can see they're all identical. They all have the same lengths. Maybe this is length A, we got side B here, the hypotenuse being C. They're all the same. So how do we distinguish these mathematically? They all seem to have the same lengths. So to distinguish these mathematically, we're going to first put them on a coordinate system. And I'm just going to flip these around so that the same angle is always at the origin here. So I'm just going to flip these around. So it's all the same four right triangles. They all have the same interior angle near the origin. And to differentiate these mathematically, just first focus on one here in the first quadrant. And since we are dealing with an XY coordinate system, we're just going to start labeling our right triangle in terms of X and Y then. And then it's common to call the hypotenuse here R for radius since this, R, this length here will sweep out a circle. And then our standard angle is always coming from the initial to the terminal. So this is commonly referred to as the standard setup. Uh, there's nothing in math that says it has to be this way, uh, but it is a standard so that we, you know, can talk to each other and know what we're each referencing. And with this standard setup, all the trig functions, we can write then in terms of X, Y, and R. And of course, there's always the Pythagorean theorem hanging around. And by the way, if you aren't familiar with this, uh, x squared plus y squared equals r squared is also the equation that graphs a circle. A circle of radius r. So again, try not to lose sight of these right triangles here that we're still talking about a ter an initial side and a terminal side, and we sweep through that, and then we have our angle. But instead of sweeping through here, I'm going to sweep this over now into the second quadrant. And so we can form the same right triangle, so it's the same one, at the same lengths, but of course now it's over here in the second quadrant. And something new happens here, because remember our angle is between the initial and the terminal, where theta is no longer representing that. So I'm going to use phi here, PHI. Phi is actually our standard angle here. And then theta, what we then call, we call it the reference angle. So remember, between your initial and your terminal, that's always the standard angle. And the standard angle will always form one of these right triangles. And the interior angle of that right triangle is the reference angle. Now I say all angles, but there's always the exception here that the uh, axis angles, so those don't form a right triangle. So if you chose 90 degrees, you're not going to get a right triangle. Uh, just like if you chose 180 degrees and so forth. So this is our new thing the reference angle.
And let's just take this off the coordinate system for a second and just look at it as a picture just kind of floating in space here and throw some numbers on it. Now, a challenge that can happen here is that this is just kind of a picture floating in space. And it's very common that people think of this object as having a length. So it's very common for you to be thinking right now that, oh, well, these numbers 3, 4, and 5 are representing the length of these sides. But that interpretation changes when we stick it onto a coordinate system. Because on a coordinate system, we're now saying that we're going minus 4 to get to the edge here. So this minus 4 doesn't represent the length anymore. The minus 4 actually represents right where the right triangle is ending. Again, it's pretty common to write this as an ordered pair that represents the point right here. So our x would be minus 4, and our y value here is 3. So there's a difference between just your picture and then when you put it onto a coordinate system. So let's put back this one in the first quadrant. So if you can see in the first quadrant, this four is now positive because this is a positive x direction and we have a positive y direction here. And again, we can represent this with an ordered pair. And likewise for the second quadrant, now I like to call these the first quadrant right triangle, the second quadrant right triangle, and we can keep going now to the other two. So now we have the third quadrant right triangle. So we're going minus four into the x direction and then minus three into the y. And so we get our ordered pair then of minus 4, minus 3. And then finally for the fourth quadrant, right triangle, positive 4 in the x, minus 3 into the y. And then here are the exact four right triangles but now distingu distinguished mathematically by putting it on a coordinate system. So question one, what quadrant is this right triangle in? So the interior angle, we put on a coordinate system, so here it is, and that is quadrant three. How about question two? What quadrant is this right triangle in? So let me try some wrong answers. Maybe you drew your coordinate system like this. Well, there's no terminal when you draw it like this. Remember the terminal is a line that starts from the origin and goes off. So there's no terminal if you draw it like this. So maybe put the coordinate system up here then. Now if you do that, there is a terminal. So here is a line that starts from the origin and goes off. 
So we could say that's our terminal. However, this right triangle, while it is a right triangle, this one is drawn towards the y-axis. And we want to always draw our right triangles towards the x-axis. So this would be the right triangle for the third quadrant. So finally, if we draw it in this position, so I've chosen all three corners here now. So if we choose it in this position and have this as our interior angle, we do have our terminal line again. And the terminal line also draws a right triangle by drawing a line down towards the x-axis. You want to always draw your line to the x-axis. And so this is a quadrant one. Right triangle. So how about this then with just some numbers, given this coordinate point, what quadrant is this point in? So if we draw our coordinate system, and I'm just going to say 2 is right here, and I'll just say minus 3 is down here, and so here's our point. This would mean, remember, a terminal always comes from the origin. Draw it to our point. And so this would be our standard angle. And so this point is in quadrant 4. The angle is in quadrant 4. And, remember, you draw towards the x-axis, and the right triangle is in quadrant 4. So the point, the standard angle, and the right triangle, they're all in the same quadrant. That'll always be true. So going back to our picture, we got our standard angle between the initial and terminal. And that will always form a right triangle when you draw down to the x-axis or up to the x-axis, depending where you are. And that interior angle there is always what we call then the reference angle. And let's just say this is 150 degrees. If this is 150, then knowing that a straight line is 180, then we can figure out what theta is. That must be 30. So what is sine of 150 then? So to get this answer, we're going to use the reference angle. And let's just strip away the coordinate system. And I really do think for your brain that you should separate the coordinate system versus just the picture by itself. So this picture, we're being... We're, being asked about sine. So from last lecture, we know something about sine. We know sine of 30 is 1 over 2. And we also know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So if we look at our right triangle, the angle looks at the opposite. So we can see y is going to be 1, 
And R, the hypotenuse, is going to be 2. And if we use Pythagorean theorem, just plugging that in, we can solve for x. Now, whenever you take the square root of both sides, you always have to consider the plus and minus solution. And so which is the right one? Do we choose the plus or minus solution here? So it's subjective, I would say. And this is where dealing with the picture is different than the coordinate system. Because when dealing with a picture, it's common to treat these as lengths. And lengths always have a positive number. So I did put in the positive one there. So for instance, you know, if you think about the length of your pencil, well, that length is some positive number. Or the length of your hair. Does it make sense to say that your hair has negative length? So length is commonly associated with a positive value, which is why when looking at this picture, you'd probably go with the positive number. And the positive number is also what makes sense when you're using 30 degrees. But there's a difference once you stick it on the coordinate system. Because now we're dealing with positive and negative directions. And so this length isn't really interpreted that way anymore. I mean, it still can be. But once you're on the coordinate system, this number usually means the position. And the position here is in the negative direction. And so we would actually assign this then a negative value. I want to stress this again. The difference between the coordinate system and just your picture sitting there. Because with your picture just sitting here, no one's going to argue with this square root of 3. If you want to call that positive, okay. It's your picture. But that's going to change once you stick it on a coordinate system. Because if you had a positive 3 on the coordinate system here, then some people are going to say, well, don't you mean negative? because this is in the negative direction on the coordinate system. And I do think you should try to differentiate between the picture, which is commonly using positive numbers because you think of that as a length. But on the coordinate system, these are now points. And again, the ultimate point here, and by point I literally mean a point on the graph, is our x position is minus square root of 3, and our y position is positive 1. These are points on a graph where your picture is a length. So there is something that can still be confusing here because sine of 30 is 1 half, so that works. But what about cosine of 30? 
So from the last lecture, cosine of 30 is positive square root of 3 over 2. But if we look at our picture here, our picture seems to suggest that cosine 30 is actually negative square root of 3 over 2. So what's happening here? Well, this 30 degrees, if, if you would do this, this 30 degrees right here is the reference angle. While over here, these values that you're memorizing, these values are the standard angle. And that's what can be confusing about this picture when the angle's given here. And again, there's, there's nothing that's wrong with this picture. But if you're not understanding the context correctly, you might get confused. And so what really is going to help here is if we actually drew in the standard angle. Now things might be clear that, remember, what we're ultimately asking about is what 150 is. We're not asking what 30 is. However, 30 will help us. So we know from the starting of this lecture, at least so far, you haven't quite burned it into your brain, I'm sure yet, but sine is y over r in our standard notation. And if we look at our picture, we can see y is 1 and r is 2. And so sine of 150 is positive 1 half. And why we we are ultimately asking about 150 degrees. To get this answer, we are mostly using the reference angle. So how about cosine 135? So we'll start with our coordinate system. And we want to figure out First, really, what quadrant is this in? So 135 is between 90 and 180. So we know it's going to be in quadrant 2. So I'll just draw that. 135 is our standard angle. And now that we have this, we're going to draw a line to the x-axis to determine what right triangle we're dealing with. So we have a quadrant two right triangle. And we can figure out then what the reference angle is. The reference angle is always the one of this right triangle. So take 180 minus our standard angle. We got 45 for our reference. And now we're going to take away the coordinate system for a moment and just think of this as a picture. So we're being asked about cosine, and we know cosine 45 is square root of 2 over 2. We also know that cosine is adjacent over a hypotenuse. So here's our angle. Our angle always looked at the opposite. So we know adjacent and hypotenuse. So now that we have this picture, we're going to stick it on a coordinate system. And once we stick it on a coordinate system, this square root of 2 is going to have to be a minus. Because it's now going in the negative x direction. 
And so we have our pieces. We have our X and R. And so we can then determine cosine 135 is minus square root of 2 over 2. So how about tangent 240? Start with a coordinate system. Let's figure out what quadrant we're in. So 240, so we have 180 and 270. So 240 is going to be in quadrant 3. And there's our standard angle. Once we have our standard angle, we'll draw to the x-axis to determine which right triangle we have here. So we got our quadrant three right triangle. And then we can determine the reference angle. So since we know this is 180 degrees, 180 and 60 will get us our standard. So now that we have our right triangle and the interior angle, we'll strip away the coordinate system for a moment and just look at this as a picture. So we're being asked about tangent. Now I'm gonna take the approach of getting tangent from sine and cosine. So we know tangent is sine over cosine and then for the table of values you're memorizing, sine of 60 is square root of 3 over 2, cosine of 60, 1 half, and then this simplifies the square root of 3. And tangent, we also know, is opposite over adjacent. Now remember square root of 3, we can also write as square root of 3 over 1. And so from that, we can get our opposite and adjacent. Now that we have our picture, we're going to put it back on the coordinate system to determine if our numbers need a sign change. So now that we're on our coordinate system, we look at square root of 3, we can see this is going into the negative direction. So when we put it on our coordinate system, this gets a sign change. And if we look at the other value, we can see this is also going in the negative direction. This number also needs a sign change. And now our picture is correctly on our coordinate system. And again, it's, you know, it's common to think of this as a length, but once that's on a coordinate system, it's more helpful to think of these numbers as the actual coordinates. That's our point right here. So we know that here's our x value, here's our y value, and tangent is y over x. And so now we can just plug our information in. And so tangent 240 is positive square root of 3. So here you go, question four, what is sine of 330 degrees?
let's start with our coordinate system. So drawing out the standard angle, we'd see this is in quadrant four. So we'll draw to the x-axis and see that we have a quadrant four right, rec right triangle. And then given that this is 360 degrees, we can determine what's left over here is 30. We'll strip away the coordinate system for a moment and just look at our picture. We're being asked about sine. And so we know sine of 30 is a half. We know sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And now that we have our picture, we'll stick it back on the coordinate system and see if our number needs a change in sign. Now the hypotenuse, the hypotenuse will never change sign. The hypotenuse is always positive. So putting it back on our coordinate system, we can see this one is going in the negative direction. And so that does need to be assigned a minus one. So we have y and r. And we know sine is y over r. And so we can then determine sine of 330 degrees is minus one half. So in summary, as part of our standard definitions, so we learned in the first lecture, our standard definition is having an initial side and a terminal side. Now we're evolving on that. Part of the standard definition is also calling this X and this distance here Y within a hypotenuse of R. And then rewriting all the trig functions in terms of those letters. And then we look at reference angles. Now you may be, or may have not, um, been wondering as we do some of these problems that you could have just typed them in your calculator. And there are, most of the time, we want the exact answer, which means something like square root of 3 over 2 versus its decimal counterpart. But what's also important here that I want you to realize is going through these manipulations is also helping you learn trigonometry itself. So don't focus so much on the end goal that you have to get this answer. I mean, obviously you want that for the points, but if you're tempted just to use your calculator to get an answer, I'm trying to discourage you from that, that don't forget that part of these exercises is to also understand trigonometry itself and its workings and knowledge. And that is the end of the lecture.